This is Investment Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Daily live streaming interactive featuring Mrs. Backup. Subscribe, hit the notification, smash the likes. Now, here's Backup Brad Kimes. Come on in. Good morning. Welcome back to Investment Perspectives, everybody. I wanted to put together a video real quick, and I want you to stay with me through this thing. I'm going to show you some things you've seen. I'm going to show you some things you haven't. But what I do hope I show you is a perspective I've had for quite a while that I want to share with you. I'm not a financial advisor, but I've just become very comfortable sharing my thoughts and insights and my opinions on my investments, and I want to do that this morning. So let's start with this about XRP and crypto. The first place I actually want to start is right here. This is a list of the 10 most successful tech geniuses. And I'm just going to quickly run through them. Michael Dell, 22.9 billion. Maha Tang from Tencent Holdings, 38.1. Jack Ma from Alibaba, 38.8. Sergey Brin from Google, 49.1. Larry Page from Google, 50.9. Steve Ballmer, 52.7 from Microsoft. Zuckerberg from Facebook, 54.7. Larry Ellison, 59 billion. Bill Gates, 98 billion from Microsoft. And Bezos from Amazon, 113 billion. I think we have all have seen the images of Bezos in the early days, or even Steve Jobs, who's not on this list anymore, God rest his soul. But uh, we've all seen the early pictures of them in an office with a piece of wood for a desk on blocks, uh, working out of a garage on computers, all of these things. And one of the important things to understand about these people is they ha all have something very, very important in common. They have an appetite for risk. Oh, yeah. It's very fun to think about all the money they've made. But how fun is it to think about all the sacrifice they gave? That's the key. Do you have the appetite for risk? Because they all have it. Now let's keep going. Because the reality here is, is that there is no greater wealth creation than investing in early innovation and early technology. I take you even further back a step to the Vanderbilt family who made a large point of the, part of their fortune widely from shipping and railroad empires. That's right. You know, the railroad, when it was put in across the country, really, really helped the development and the onset of the Industrial Revolution. The Rockefeller family, one of the richest families in the world, and I think still to this day, widely made their fortune out of American petroleum industry, taking advantage of what was the Industrial Revolution well underway by the 19th and 20th century. Now I want to bring you to a clip I think most of us have seen. This is Jay Clayton on the left from the SEC Fireside Chat. Glenn Hutchins in the middle, connected to Silver Lake, BlackRock, president of AT&T, helping with the 5G implementation, former president of the New York Federal Reserve, and Gary Cohn on the right, who is also a venture capitalist, as well as a former national economic advisor, to President Trump. Let's listen to this couple minutes exchange where they just got done sorting out the difference between a digital dollar and crypto currencies, crypto assets. Let's listen to this exchange. There's something that's said here very quickly, and I want you to understand this, and then we're going to let it play for a minute or two, but let's listen here. Uh, now, if you talk about the whole crypto kind of world, um, we, we uh, I got I got to this from the kind of the payments thing because I've been looking for a way in which we could take the cost of payments down by ninety nine percent the way we've taken out the cost of trading and securities and the payment. Well, I got into this thing from the payments world, the way we could take the payments cost down ninety nine percent the way we could do with trade and securities. Well, that's extremely important. 
because when they're thinking about cross-border payments and settlement, they're also thinking about taking the transaction fees out of trades and securities. Come on in. Very quickly said, but an enormous, an enormous statement as he runs right through it. Now let's listen to the next few minutes because it's important to what we're talking about here today. Payments world, uh, we use the, the term, the uh, we oftentimes use the term of the payments rails. There's the credit card rails, there's the checking rails, there's the Fed wire rails. Moves around. So let's take, to understand how I think to think about the cryptocurrency world um, is there are three parts of it, the blockchain, the, um, co the, the token, and the protocol. Uh, and the three of them operate together to create one solution, one integrated solution that has the capacity to, to revolutionize the way we move things of value around the world. Let me, let me use a railroad analogy to make the point. Um, the, 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 the token is the equivalent of the boxcar. It's the thing into which you embed something of digital value that needs to be moved from one place to another, from one part of, of a blockchain to another. The blockchain is the cargo invoice, is the invoice in the cargo manifest. And the rails is the protocol. Uh, and you have to think about all three as one integrated solution that enables you to accomplish the, the purpose of moving anything of value around the world at the speed of light at no cost the way we, we, we uh, talk about email today. People who just talk about blockchain are talking about something very interesting. Uh, but it's a piece of enterprise technology that's an advanced database and a private blockchain unconnected to the global, uh, to the, to the uh, Bitcoin or another digital currency blockchain is the equivalent of the intranet. Mm -hmm. Remember when we had intranets to begin with where it was really cool, you could do um, internal communication with people in your own companies, you know, but, but it wasn't really until those intranets were connected via the internet protocol to other intranets to create the World Wide Web of intranets called the Internet, that the world changed. There it is right there. We are in that moment now. We are seeing in the crypto space thousands of different private network intranet blockchain systems networks that exist. What we need is a protocol that brings all of these intranet private blockchains together just in the same manner that the internet was brought together by those protocols like the SMTP, the, the email protocol, the file transfer protocol, the HTT protocol that gives us the worldwide internet that we have today. Much the same thing, I believe, is about to happen to the blockchain space and the digital asset space. If we look at that earlier comment that Glenn Hutchins made about transactions, saving 99% on transactions, just like uh, cross-border payments and in the derivative securities market, I certainly believe, as Ripple says, that cross-border payments are certainly a first step. But I also believe that there is a much larger goal to cross-border payments. Bring utility to the network. However, in order to have enough liquidity to process trillions of dollars of cross-border payments and securities and derivatives market, you have to have enough collateral or assets or reserves on the ledger to provide the level of liquidity needed to settle them. This is largely why I believe there's something potentially much larger taking place during this economic crisis. In order to take advantage of this new technology to a level that can be felt and have a real impact, I believe it must happen quickly. We know that the partners are immense. We know that there's massive amounts of partnerships on RippleNet. These are enormous banks and companies that have a great need to gain from the benefit of cross-border settlement and transaction time. If we look at 
what has happened thus far. This has not been a slow and steady growth. This has been about testing and testing and implementation, and they have been selling over-the-counter XRP to many, many customers around the world. None of the people that have been buying XRP over-the-counter have given it back. None of the people that have been buying it over-the-counter are complaining about where the price currently is. That's why I also believe that what we see in MoneyGram, using it through the corridors they've begun using it, to the percentage levels they're using it for settlement, accessing ODL, are more than just a litmus test, but a proof of concept that is providing data collection and confirmation that not only this works, but this is the new financial system, and this will become the new Internet of Value. The ILP, recently integrated with the Ethereum network, also a platform where Sologenic has built an amazing trading platform for fractional stocks, tokenized stocks, to 30 of the largest exchanges around the world, offering the option to buy, sell, trade, and hold over 30,000 different stocks. Now, Finexus, partnered with BitTrue, is also tokenizing real-world assets, building this business model off of the XRP ledger. Now become interoperable with OneChain. I believe the ILP in the XRP ledger help to federate all of the private networks because it is a federated system. And it will help federate all the different subsets, private networks and layers together to act as one single layer, moving us from what we understand this space to be today of thousands of different private blockchain networks to the internet, from the intranet to the internet, to the worldwide web that we have today, or the new internet of value. And in doing so, I believe that there will be some of us that have the opportunity to win the way the tech rich list has won, the way the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers have won. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my personal opinion because there has been no greater wealth creation than investing in early innovation and technology. The question is, have we invested in the right ones? One thing I do know for sure that's an absolute fact, if you're in this space, you're an early investor, you're a speculator, and you better damn sight have an appetite for risk, just like everybody on that rich list. All right, guys, this is going to do it for me. Before we go, I do want you to take a look at the FATF that is going to have a first deadline here in June, and then the FSB connected to the G20 that has put out consultative documents on regula- regula- regulatory standards and supervisory standards and challenges for global stablecoin, inclusive blockchain deployment for supply chains and trade. Come on in. And Ripple is cited in the Interledger in that document as well as other networks. And here from the World Economic Forum Policymaker Toolkit, the example for settlement between inter- and intra-bank payments settlements, JPM coin and XRP. FSB Financial Stability Board connected to the G20 also released this month, along with the other former uh, previous document, this document here on enhancing cross-border payments. And that's why... I look back to this long journey that Ripple has been on with the Federal Reserve Faster Payments Task Force and realize, for me, they are the solution. All right, guys, hit the like and subscribe. Share the content if you like it. Don't forget, 10 a.m. this morning, we have Cryptopolis on the show, co-host on Friday mornings, Week in Review. It's going to be a good one. We'll see you there. (laughs) 